。在互联网文本数据即将枯竭之际，很多 AI 研究者将目光转向视频，但如何让 AI 理解视频数据，成了新的难题。在2024世界经济论坛的一次会谈中，图灵奖得主 Meta 首席科学家耶勒康与斯坦福大学教授 c o u r s e r a 联合创始人 Das。卡尔等一起讨论这个问题。Daphne c a r 的研究领域主要是人工智能及其在生物医学科学中的应用。他们认为，关于 AI 有以下几个大核心点：一、燕勒看认为，适合用来处理视频的模型并不是我们现在大范围应用的生成模型，新的模型应该学会在抽象的表征空间中预测，而不是在像素空间中。二、视频预测的难题主要在于像素空间的复杂性，以及对于物体摆放方式和运动轨迹的预测。这些具体的像素空间预测都很困难，导致传统生成模型在视频处理中效果不佳。视频输入需要新的架构来处理，以在抽象表征空间中进行预测。三 d e f n e Carr 认为 AI 系统需要在抽象表征空间中进行预测，而不是在具体的像素空间。同时，也需要理解因果关系。当前模型中缺失的重要能力是理解因果关系，尤其在与物质世界的交互中更为重要。四，了解决视频处理中的难题，需要创造新的科学方法和技术，使 AI 系统能够像人类一样利用信息。这将需要一些科学和技术上的突破，对于在制造业、生物学等领域进行尝试推理都具有重要意义。详细的，请看后面的机器之心发布的中英文视频。I've had conversations in Davos where people have said, "Well, we're running out of data, right? No, There's not, not that much more on the web." True. It's great. But Perhaps. Self-driving cars, more data. Jan, where are you?、Uh... I totally agree with Daphne.、Um, so I think, I mean, certainly if we concentrate on the the paradigm of、uh, LLM, autonomous LLMs,、uh, it's saturating. There's no question it's saturating.、Uh, Indeed, we're running out of data. We're basically using all the public、uh, data on the on the internet.、Uh, Little Solalands <coughs> are trained with what 10 trillion tokens. Okay, that's、uh, it's about two bytes per token, so it's about two 10 to the 13 bytes of training data.、Uh, it would take、uh, most of us here between 150 and 200 thousand years to read this. Okay, now think about what a child sees through vision. And try to put a number on how much information a four-year-old child has seen、uh, during his or, or her life, and it's about 20 megabytes per second going through the optical nerve、uh, for 16,000、uh, wake hours、uh, for the, in the first four years of life, and, and 3,600、uh, uh, seconds per hour.、Uh, you did the calculation, and that's 10 to the 15 bytes. So what that tells you is that a four-year-old child has seen 50 times more information. Than the biggest LLMs that we have, and and the four-year-old child is way smarter than the biggest LLMs that we have. The amount of knowledge it's accumulated is apparently smaller because it's in a different form, but in fact, a four-year-old child has learned enormous amount of knowledge about、uh, about how the world works, and we can do this with LLMs today. And so we're missing some essential uh, uh, science and, and new architectures to take advantage. Of sensory input、um, that you know future AI systems would be capable of uh, of, uh, of taking take, you know taking advantage of, and you know this will require a few scientific and technological、uh, breakthroughs, which may happen in the next year, three years, five years, ten years. We don't know. It's hard. Wait, let me. I want to make sure I understand you here, Jan. So the amount of text data that's available will grow, but not infinitely. But the amount of visual data that we could potentially put into these machines. Is massive, no, much more. Well, the sixteen thousand hours of、uh, of video I was telling you about, that is thirty minutes of uploads on YouTube. I mean, we have way more data than we can deal with. Right. The question is, how do we get machines to learn from video? We don't know. Right. So, what is the new architecture that is needed if the next step is going to be video inputs? Obviously, a large language model isn't、yep. exactly right the way it's been constructed or isn't optimized for it. Yep. What do we have to build now? Okay, so large language models are trained in,、uh, or, or NLP systems more generally、uh, are trained in, in, two,、um, in one way. You take a piece of text, you corrupt it, and then you train some gigantic neural net to reconstruct the full text. 
okay, to predict the words that are missing, basically. You corrupt it by removing some of the words. LLMs, uh, like ChatGPT and, and Llama and others, uh, you train them by just removing the last word. I mean, technically, it's more complicated, but it's basically what, what they do, right? Um, so you, you, you train the system to reconstruct missing information about the input. So of course, the obvious idea is, why don't we do this with images, right? Take, a piece of, take an image, corrupt it by removing some pieces or corrupting it, and then train some big neural net to recover the image. And that doesn't work, or it doesn't work very well. Um, there is a, a whole thread of efforts in that direction that has been going on for a while, and it doesn't really work very well. Uh, it doesn't work for video either. I've been working for nine years on video prediction, you know, trying to predict, you know, show a piece of video to a system and then train it to predict what's going to happen next. And if the system is capable of doing this, it probably has understood something about right. the underlying nature of the world the same way a text system that is trying to predict the next words, uh, you know, captures something about the, the meaning of the, of the sentence. But that doesn't work either. It, and so what you mean is you take a video and you have me going like this and dropping it and I'll be able to predict that the pen will fall. But right yeah. now a machine can't do that. A machine can, uh, so the question is, uh, you know, your pen has a particular configuration. When you, when you drop it, it's gonna follow a particular trajectory. Most of us cannot predict exactly what the trajectory is, but we can predict that the object is gonna fall. It takes babies about nine months to figure out that an object that is not supported falls, okay? Intuitive physics, that takes us nine months to learn when we're babies. How do we do this with machines? Wait, okay, but then this, sorry if this is a dumb question, but I don't understand. If the future, these things are gonna work and be, continue to be revolutionary because they're gonna understand video because that's where the data is, but we don't understand video, how do you square that? So the, the potential solution to this, uh, so there is no real solution yet, but the, the things that are most promising at the moment, at least the things that work for uh, image recognition, I'm gonna surprise everybody, are not generative. Okay, so the, the models that work best do not generate images, they do not reconstruct, they do not predict. What they do is they, they predict, but in a space of abstract representation. So the same way I cannot predict exactly how the, the pen will fall in your hand, I can predict that it will fall. So at some abstract level of you know, a pen being uh, here or there, without the details of exactly what its configuration is, I can make that prediction. So what's necessary would be to make predictions in abstract representation space as opposed to pixel space. Right. And that's why you know, all the predictions in pixel space have failed so far. It's just too complicated. But Nick, it's more than just a video. I think the other thing that babies learn is the notion of cause and effect, mm -hmm. yeah. which they learn by intervening in the world and seeing what happens. And we have not yet done that at all with LLMs. I mean, they are entirely predictive engines. They're just doing associations. Getting to causality, which is so critical when one interacts with, when one tries to cross the chasm between bits and atoms, that's a huge capability that's missing in current day models. It's missing in models that are embodied. It's missing in the ability of our computers to do common sense reasoning. It's missing when we try to go to other applications, whether it's manufacturing or biology or anything that interacts with the physical world. Well, in, in embodied system, it's actually kind of working. So I mean, some, some of the systems have world models. You know, here's a representation of the state of the world at time t. Here's an action I might take. Tell me the state of the world at time t plus one. And this is the kind of, so that's, a, that's called a world model. And uh, if you have this kind of world model, you can plan a sequence of actions to arrive at a particular mm -hmm. goal. And uh, we don't have any AI systems based on this principle at the moment, except very simple kind of robotic-like systems yeah. that don't learn very fast. Yeah. And so once we can scale this kind of model up, we'll have systems that can uh, understand the world, understand the physical world, they can plan, they can reason, they understand causality because they understand what action you know, what effect an action will have. And it would be goal-oriented, objective-oriented, because, you know, we can give them goals to satisfy with this planning. So that's the future architecture of AI systems. Yeah. And in my opinion, once we figure out how to make this work, nobody in their right mind would use autoregressive LLM anymore. <laughs>